I love this particular devotional today because it's, I looked at the title of it and I've been through this book, oh, I don't know, <laughs> hundreds, at least hundreds of times. I mean, I've been a born-again Christian for 35 plus years, but I recognized it just by the title and so I knew it was coming and praise the Lord. You know, what's interesting is that so many times, because of the ministry that I'm in, I deal with people that don't believe God. I mean, they say they believe God, and they accept sometimes certain things that they believe about God, and sometimes they believe certain things are from God, but most of the time, bluntly, if I could be real with you and you could be real with me, they don't believe God, and sometimes maybe you don't either, because if he says what he means and means what he says, then you can trust that what he said he will do, right? Well, whenever I tell people that they don't believe God, then I ask them, well, what's your reaction to, say, something you don't like in the world right now? I mean, for instance, in politics or in their personal point of view about some political thing or some social thing or some avenue with which they're frustrated, it's like, well, did you know that you can ask God about that and he can kind of like maybe show you the way to approach that situation that maybe there's a different perspective to look at that if it's somebody that's in authority then maybe God put that person in authority and now it's up to us to either help by prayer help by praying for his soul help by somehow allowing the Holy Spirit to reveal him as he is either a benefit or a curse to the world or to the land for instance like the good kings in israel you know god said here i'm going to rule you and the children of israel said no nah, we don't want that we want a king like everybody else has so god gave him a king and the first king when he was with god the people rejoiced when he wasn't with god the people were oppressed and they were like disgruntled and so they didn't like the choice that they had so then God chose another and as they went through this whole idea of people being in charge they found that they couldn't accept the fact that the king's heart is turned as the Lord chooses and he reveals what is inside of a person's heart by placing them in an obvious place that they can show forth where they're coming from you see God does the same thing with you because you're called the light of the world and your city on the hill he reveals your heart also by putting you in an obvious place. For instance, like if the circumstances are put into some place where if Jesus says, love your enemies, and you get stuck right in the middle of an uncomfortable work environment, and you suddenly decide you hate someone, what kind of heart is that revealing? Are you showing what you're made out of? That you're faithful to the Lord to pray for that person, to care for that person, to want the best for that person, to even be like Jesus said, lay down your life for that person? Or rather, because they're just a co-worker, no, 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 I don't deal with that. I only deal with people that aren't saved when I'm in church, when I'm comfortable with my own skin, when I'm prepared in my own way. Ah, I see. So God is only there when you want him to be the way you want him to be. God reveals everything. It's all an open book. So he reveals it every day to us so that we would learn, not so that we would be beat up or bummed out or blown out because we're not as perfect as we think we are. But rather he wants to guide us through this life, showing us that because it's an open book to him, he wants to let us know that we are an open book also to ourselves, that we're growing in the graces and we need to apply that to be as real about God as he said he would be. Because me personally, when I don't like sometimes I say, okay, God, go get him. God takes care of it. I don't have a problem, then I'm a happy camper. So the circumstances are either meant to encourage us, exhort us, teach us, reveal to us, or somehow bring to us an awareness of giving it to God and letting him show us why it's there, why it's doing what it's doing, what it's accomplishing in us. This is all a learning process. It's not just a pick it up and leave it behind and pretend like there's a God. The reality is, it's up to you. <laughs> is God real? 
or is he not? Do you really believe what he says, or don't you? In Streams in the Desert, it says, I believe God that it shall be even as it was told me in Acts 27-25. I went to America some years ago with the captain of a boat, who was a very devout Christian. When off the coast of Newfoundland, he said to me, the last time I crossed here five weeks ago, something happened which revolutionized the whole of my Christian experience. We had a man, George Mueller of Bristol, on board. I had been on the bridge 24 hours and never left it. George Mueller came to me and said, Captain, I have come to tell you that you know I must be in Quebec to Saturday afternoon. It is impossible, I said to him. Very well, if your ship cannot take me, God will find some other way. I have never broken an engagement for 57 years. Let us go down into the chart room and pray. I looked at the man of God and thought to myself, what an idiot. <laughs> what lunatic asylum can that man have come from? I've never heard of such a thing as this. He said, Mr. Mueller, I said, do you know how dense this fog is? No, he replied. My eye is not on the density of the fog, but on the living God who controls every circumstance of my life. He knelt down and prayed one of the most simple prayers, and when he had finished, I was going to pray, but he put his hand on my shoulder and said, and told me not to pray. First, he said, you do not believe he will answer. Second, he said, I believe he has, and there is no need whatever for you to pray about it. I looked at him, <laughs> shocked, and he said, Captain, I have known my Lord for 57 years, and there has never been a single day that I have failed to get audience with the king. So you get up, Captain, and open the door, and you will see the fog gone. I got up, and the fog was indeed gone. On Saturday afternoon, George Mueller was in Quebec for his engagement. You know, I always read that, and I am almost like goosebumps, because if you've experienced God in a personal way for long periods of time in your life, and you went out there on a limb, thinking that you know you're going to stick your neck out and it's going to get chopped off let me tell you <laughs> maybe it will and maybe it won't but the one thing you will learn about an experience of a real relationship with god is that when he chooses to build you up and encourage you in those kind of demonstrations of himself you'll know that every circumstance of your life is divinely appointed so to speak and forget the divine part let's just get real it's practically reality that you can trust what he says today for you. If he tells you today, sit down, don't go to work, then you ought to sit down and don't go to work, because you know what? <laughs> the work probably will blow up or something silly. But you know what I mean. Every day you need to know what God is leading you to do today. So that way you can go your way in confidence, revealing to others that you may look like a lunatic at times, but if every time he has come through, how can you doubt a personal relationship with God like that? Me as a Jesus gypsy, me as a Jesus freak, me as a person who's walked with the Lord for countless years and have failed and fallen and stood up and been on my knees and <laughs> been on mountaintops and been whatever you want to call it, all over the place, from each spectrum, from one extreme to the other. I can tell you this, that you know the Lord is always, always, coming through on every occasion and you can see that and then sometimes you can stick your neck out you know and you can walk just as confident as George Mueller did knowing that God is the God of your circumstances and he can exactly come through just like he did for George Mueller just like he will for you today